Yes, hello, good afternoon. This is Kevin de Cuba, uh, the founder, co founder of the Circuit Economy Platform of the Americas. And uh, we are here with Mark Dorfman of uh, Biomimicry 3.8. Uh, Mark Dorfman just uh, gave <coughs> his uh, presentation during the plenary session today and this, this morning. And uh, we are happy to have him with us here in Medellin, Colombia. Uh, for the first edition of the Circular Economy Forum of the Americas, CEFA 2017. So we're going to have a conversation with uh, Mark about uh, what exactly is in summary, in a, in a brief uh, uh, note, what biomimic degree is all about and how this is related to circular economy and what his uh, vision and is about the potential application of biomimicry in our region, in Latin America and the Caribbean, or well, let's say the American continent. Uh, so I will start first with uh, allowing Mark to introduce himself, and then we will enter into the question that I just posted. Thank you, Kevin. So I'm a principal and biomimicry chemist at Biomimicry 3.8, a consultancy firm. 3.8 stands for 3.8 billion years of life on Earth. And basically, we help companies solve problems by first breaking their problem or challenge down to a function and then exploring the natural world to see how organisms from amoebas to zebras and everything in between have solved for the same function and then based on the principles the underlying principles of those strategies and the deep patterns across different species and ecosystems we come up with new concepts for inventing solutions um, and if we can we partner with our strategic lab partners to actually develop working prototypes and then hopefully take it from there. Great, great. So um, <coughs> looking at, uh, as we are at the first circuit economy forum of the Americas, uh, the first question that I have is how does biomimicry uh, fit within the circuit <coughs> economy umbrella or do you have another perspective to it? Well, nature is circular. I mean, just think about it, the water cycle, the nitrogen cycle, the carbon cycle. Nature, after 3.8 billion years, has figured out that a circular economy, if you will, is the smart way of, of surviving. Um, and it happens in all of our ecosystems. So uh, what I always say about solving problems is that nature uh, is a great source of inspiration. Um, and particularly in the realm of chemistry, which is what I was speaking about today, basically the chemistry is the foundation of everything that we make and use in our industrial society and is the foundation of everything nature makes and is the actual the foundation of nature itself. Um, so to solve chemistry-related problems, particularly for, for creating a more circular economy, it makes sense to look to nature for inspiration and we're in this country that i forget exactly where it falls in the rank of countries that have you know the highest uh, biological, biological diversity but it is up there yes, um, yeah, but, yeah. and i would much rather be out in the biological diversity than be in this room but you know <laughs> <laughs> we have to um, share our knowledge and insight and enthusiasm with the people who who come here yes. And uh, since you're mentioning uh, Colombia as one of the top-ranking countries with the highest level of biodiversity, yeah. um, within the context of, let's say, the, the continent of the Americas, uh, where do you see opportunities? Um, I mean, where would you first start uh, in the sense of uh, trying to apply the, the principles of circular economy and biomimicry uh, in the region? Well, you know, the opportunities are everywhere. The problem, you know, after 10 years of doing uh, consultancy work, the real problem is finding partners, especially the partners with the money and the resources to help you realize, you know, new solutions and inventions, um, is, is, is in finding uh, the right partners and companies, whether it be private sector or uh, governments um, or municipalities. That's really the challenge. Um, and one way we've gone about it is just really speaking about biomimicry. I mean, Janine Benyus wrote the book uh, 20 years ago, which is what brought companies to us in the first place and kind of put biomimicry out there. And so I think 
perhaps in new countries, uh, one of the first things you can do is just have more workshops and forums and whatever on biomimicry to sort of get the word out there because then the same thing might happen here that happened in the US is that companies find out about biomimicry and they start calling and say, how would nature do so and so? And the ones who call are the ones who are really interested in engaged, in, uh, engaged yeah. yeah. Great. So with this uh, brief conversation, I want to thank uh, Mark Dorfman for joining us here in Medellin, Colombia. Many thanks. I hope it's uh, the first of many I visits to too. the region. Yes. And looking forward to having you with us uh, next year too in uh, Thank Santiago, you very Virginia. much. I'll be there. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Cheers.